And we're back with Tea Time Disc Golf. This is Steve Bro with Devin Frederick. How's it going, everybody? We got some coverage of the 2018 World Championships. Out, uh, this round is being played at Brewster Ridge. And we've got some exciting players. Uh, we've got, as you can see, Ricky Wasaki. Uh, he's sitting at 22 under par going into this round. We've got Andrew Presnell, uh, and he's one back of Ricky at 21 down. Uh, Kale. Uh, Kale's at 20 down, and uh, he's actually tied with Chris Clemens, uh, who is at 20 down as well. Uh, so this should be some exciting golf. This is the th the third card uh, with uh, uh, these guys doing some catch up. They need to they need to make moves and uh, and do some things to catch up to the guys in front of them right now. Yeah, we're getting down the home stretch of Worlds here, round four. So uh, these guys are looking to put up some good rounds and definitely not fall back and hope to move up yeah this is a uh, 315 foot par three uh, if you have a flick certainly is the go-to option um, i would imagine that we're going to see rick uh, throw a flick here yeah it kind of gives you this almost must get feeling right off the bat this is probably one of the easier holes of the course he got um, caught up in that higher grass though i mean that you know he didn't get the the angle right as it was flexing, so I left him a little bit short. He's going to have a long putt to start. Andrew Traditional going backhand. Yeah, probably a mid-range, just trying to get it, you know, straight out there. A little turnover, and that was a textbook out of him. Fantastic way to start. And we got the lefty and Chris here, so he's probably throwing a mid-range, just getting it straight out there and letting it fall off a little bit. And slightly downhill little wide flirting with the tree and catches it uh, he's gonna be in a tough spot over there and kale throwing a good looking shot get away from that last one running it wow right under the basket great start by kale beautiful flight and chris is he's caught up in this in this jail here so he's Fighting his way around the corner. That looks like a really good approach shot for him. Yeah, great approach from where he was. A little floaty turnover putter. Mm. You can tell Rick thought he might have a chance at making that. He's almost ready to run it down. Easy work out of Andrew getting his birdie. Mm. Chris did not want to do that. Uh, no, especially, you know, like I said, we're coming hole. down the, the home stretch. It's a birdie hole. A lot of these top cards in the world championships, you got to feel like you're losing two there. Right. And, you know, not to mention the pressure he's got. They've got a, a good amount of people watching what's happening right now. Uh, good size galleries. Brewster is such a fun course to go out and watch some good golf. Uh, and it showed there was a lot of people on the course. So, you know, you have that pressure as well. Uh, Kale feeling no pressure whatsoever. You know, he steps up and just absolutely parks the parks the hole, walks up. Let's move on. Um, and that's what you need, you know. So, uh, well done. Uh, both those guys ended up getting birdies there. Chris, unfortunate. Uh, and we'll move on to hole number two, which is just a, it's a monster uphill. Yeah, this is more uphill than... Uh, what it looks, uh, definite placement shot on your first throw, just trying to get up to that short tee pad or even up into the second gap here and then taking the second gap all the way up the hill some more to the basket. Yeah, I mean, if you've got if you've got an absolute killer forehand, you can throw forehand, forehand here and get up to that pin placement. But pretty much you're, it's, it's two very good placement shots. I know, you you can... have to get off the tee the right way in order to even get a shot at getting up. And see him skipping up to that short tee pad. That's which not is bad. Pretty good spot to be. Yeah. And yeah, you can see that rock wall off to the right, which is also OB that runs the whole length of the hole. And, and just he just stopped. hits a root or a stick or something. You're expecting that to skip and slide. That's some pretty hard packed dirt right there. So and even Ricky's going to a backhand. He's going to throw something that he's going to try to flip up and move to the right uh, just a little bit. Uh, if he can yeah. get it to stay on the right-hand side, yeah. and he just stops, too. Yeah, Ricky catching a rock or a root, and, yeah, same thing as Kale, just stopping dead. 
showed you how good Andrew's drive actually was sitting up there in front of those guys. Chris sawing off his <clears throat> forehand a little bit. He's going to be pinched up in the left side there. It's going to be uh, definitely yeah, probably taking is... your birdie out of play from here. That was a good-looking shot, but, again, it's you've got to be pretty precise with where you land on this hole. Okay, well, a good-looking shot, but... Yeah, right down the center of the fairway, but uh, you can see not getting the slide or the skip, uh, you know, it's a big took some of, for the, some of the distance off, and it's hard to reach all the way up that hill hitting a tight line. Rick's got a good, nice, he's got a good line for flexing out of forehand and just letting it come back, but he left it inside. and Kicking an OB. Could be OB. Yeah, there is out of bounds that lines that wall that you can see on the right hand side, the stone wall, and you have the white stakes that are throughout that wall that run all the way up. So you don't want to miss to the right, but any early kick and it's yeah, it's very easy to to miss your line and just kick over over the wall. It is right there on the right side. Yeah, so Andrew's going to have the best uh, chance for birdie, and that was mm -hmm. a good stop there for Chris. Rick playing it quick, just throwing it up there. So, Kale for birdie. He's reasonably close, but... Just a little low. But it was a good bid from there. Mm -hmm. It was a great second shot to even get himself uh, inside the circle like that. So, that's a great start going birdie, birdie uh, out of Andrew. You can't ask for much more than that. No, yeah, getting off to a hot start out here is always good. Kind of calm your nerves in the beginning of the round of the World Championships. You kind of expect the first hole, the second hole, you walk away from with another birdie, and you feel real good. So, and Chris with his par. And yeah, that was a good hole out of Chris. He wasn't in a good spot to start with. Made a Played great, smart. great out shot, you know, routine up shot. Uh, didn't go crazy anywhere and take any unnecessary strokes. Rick unfortunately kicked out of bounds, but he did leave it on that right hand side, and you just can't do that. So, okay, I'll wrap it up as par as well. So, again, good start out of Andrew. And, uh, we'll move on to hole number three. Uh, hole number three is another one of the kind of uh, early birdie holes. You know, you want to throw. Uh, possibly a fairway driver. Some of these guys are going to be throwing mid-ranges. Um, but it's one of those holes that is pretty easy. It's easy to access the basket, so you want to get this one. Yeah, it's fairly wide open. Uh, once again, it, it's fairly uphill. The hill is right in your face. Uh, but you can see the the big pine right next to the basket from the tee pad, and that's all I'm aiming for. It looked like that's probably what Andrew was aiming for too, and he's parked. And Kale doing the same, probably just a mid-range, straight up there, let it fade off a little, and he's can't, skipping right up to the mound. He's can't ask killing for these mid-range shots. better than that. Yeah, that is two super accurate mid-range shots that he's thrown. I'm just going to leave that on that path down there just a little bit. So he'll have a longer putt, but uh, certainly doable. It's a safer putt going uphill at the basket. <clears throat> Ricky just going to the mid range as well, and once again just parked. Yeah, routine work out of these guys. You've got a little bit of elevation on this basket, but nothing that is that is too crazy. Uh, just missed by Chris. And, yeah, I imagine the rest of these guys are just routinely tapping in. So, uh, pretty good hole out of these guys. Three birdies and the par out of Chris. Yeah, this park is – this side, I, I really enjoy Brewster. I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful course playing through these beautiful woods with uh, – it's just – it's amazing. You had Fox Hollow, which was across the street that was being played uh, for the weekend for the championships. And you'll have the finals being played over there. Uh, tomorrow uh, but uh, i'm telling you that brewster was in good shape it was a lot of fun um, and it was good to see everybody out there and enjoying this course 
tight woods. You know, you're out there and, and the entire course for the most part uh, is uh, it's fair, though. You know, I mean, they, they have the fairways cut out pretty well. Uh, so hole number four, 525 feet. Once again, your placement on the drive here is, is crucial. If you get stuck in this middle set of trees, you really don't have a good approach to this basket. Yeah. Hitting any, either the trees early, uh, the main uprights you're trying to get through, um, you're not going to get a birdie and you're going to be struggling to get a par, uh, just getting through this first set of uprights, uh, that darker tree in the back, kind of get around that and center of the fairway. That was nice that he kicked out into the opening there, uh, cause that could have been a bad result from that first shot and Kale throwing another decent shot up the middle, but he just caught that. Tree yeah, too. got That's it turned over gonna... just a little bit too much, and, you know, he's going to be pinched up with some trees. It's going to be very, very difficult to achieve par. Ricky just hitting almost first available. Yeah, and once again, I mean, you know, he kind of had a fortunate kick to stay towards the fairway and not go deeper into the woods. So I imagine he's going to be able to throw a forehand up there and hopefully salvage his par. Chris throwing a, a good shot. He's in good position to be able to attack up to the green. Ricky just having to rip into a forehand. And uh, getting himself in the middle of the for fairway, uh, another forehand from there, and he should be potting. And you can't tell, but that is dramatically uphill. Uh, just and catching the tree, and that's disastrous ending up over in there. It's like jail. jail. You can see how how closely knit all those tiny trees are. Yeah, we'll see what Kale can do out of here. He might have enough room to squeeze one up there. Looks like he's playing that same mid-range that he threw off the tee and just kind of snapping it up there. But he was laying up. You know, he's putting himself yeah, in a good I mean, position to get up from and down. From where he was, the stance he had to take and the gap he had to hit and how far he had to throw it uphill, it just made sense for him to lay it out and get his par. Some of these par fours were incredibly difficult yeah if you if you were off by a little bit on one of your shots uh getting your birdie was almost out of the question and mm -hmm. bogey was coming up quick you can see andrew just a couple feet into them thick trees and had to shape a shot and uh getting himself inside the circle but he's still got a little bit of work to do but what a beautiful green the the rock wall there that is the uh, God, the shatterer of dreams, let's say, for a lot of people as they're throwing their approach shots and they hit those rocks and because you've still got a long putt and it's slightly uphill and, you know, you just want to get it close on this approach and take the thinking out of the putting. Yeah, get it anywhere over on them wood chips. And you're feeling pretty good. Kale's feeling his, his shots right now. That was yeah, a fantastic Yeah, he's throwing really shot. smooth. He's been playing this game for a while. And Andrew's off to a hot start. Uh, looking like he's going to take a bogey here. And Chris was good there. He'll be able to clean that up. Ricky to save his par after hitting <clears throat> super early off the tee. So I'm sure he'll feel... He won't be happy about getting his par here, but... He, yeah, because mm, he doesn't he get it. it. Yeah. No, I'm sure he's not happy. Yeah, that's going to be two early bogeys for Ricky in this round, which uh, if he he expected to make a run here, being on top of the third card going into this round. Uh, yeah, Kale getting a good par there. Uh, he was pinched up a little on his drive, pitching out, uh, playing smart golf, looking smooth out there. And we'll see if Ricky can uh, can pull it together a little bit. There's still plenty of time left in this round of golf for him to uh, to make a statement. And yeah, Ricky's not one to lay down. I'm sure you know it's only fuel in the fire for him. Sure, and, uh, we got a hole five here. Uh, you got OB to the left, the rock wall, and the basket sits on the right side, about 280 feet, five feet down there. Um, a lot of forehands on this hole or uh, mid-range turnover. Possibly a putter. 
Yeah, you're going to see a lot of putters being thrown. Kale has been shaping his shots extremely well. Just catches the last one. We'll probably have a 50-60 footer. Not too much danger behind the basket for that putt, though. Um, this hole's a little nicer for the lefty. They can just throw the slow hyzer all the way down there. He catches a funny rock and doesn't get his skip. Probably got a terrible kick to the right. That's unfortunate for Chris. He played that shot the way that he was hoping to. Looks like Andrew's probably going with a putter. That's Looks way like he held inside. On. Came wow. back nice enough for a long putt. Looks like he got pretty fortunate on that one. This is kind of what I expected to see. Is a harp harp flick out of Ricky. Just lay something up the middle. Let it come back. It skips down that hill. Yeah, he's probably right around circle's edge, putting down at the basket. Yeah, good shot from Rick. Chris just pitching up. Not doing anything crazy. Ooh, good bit out of Andrew. <clears throat> Got Kale from circle two. Mm. Just wide. Uh, this is going in. Yeah. It's good bounce back after the bogey on the last hole. Yeah, he's he's on a roller coaster right now. He just went bogey birdie, bogey birdie. So uh, we'll see if he can get off that. <laughs> get away from the bogeys and just stay on the birdie train get himself moving a little bit Kale is just playing solid golf that's a par but you know, he gave it a good run so yeah one one birdie out of Ricky and pars for the rest of them uh, the pretty. flight of that putt is so fun to watch yeah, Ricky's got, uh, you know, a style of his own, kind of. You can always tell, you know, where he is on the course from across the way by his putting style. Yeah, this is a a, a nice, easy, <clears throat> for a right-handed player, a nice hyzer down this hill. Uh, you don't want to skip too long over that rock wall. That's really the danger. Uh, but if you can hit this the right way, if you get into the left, uh, you're going to be in trouble. It's It's going to be tough to fight your way out if you go in early. And that's exactly what Ricky does. Uh, yeah, he's struggling off the tees a little bit here. Some uncharacteristic uh, early releases out of him. Yeah, Kale is going back to that mid-range and tries to put it on a nice hyzer line. and God, Just a little this wide. Is, this is one of the easier birdie holes, to yeah, be perfectly a, honest with you. I'm it's a little touchy both... on the hyzer and downhill, but uh, it's not as hard as those guys made it look. Yeah, You can see uh, Chris had a nice... <clears throat> Flick Heiser down the hill. And he's going to be uh, just inside the circle, probably behind that rock. So, great shot out of him. Andrew getting it through the nice. gap and Heiser and down nice. Yeah, that, that is tree there is kind of the perfect tree, too, in the middle of the fairway. If you miss that on either side, uh, you're usually right down there in the circle. That was a great shot. That, that landed in a perfect spot for him. And Ricky's scrambling again. Yeah, that's the jail. That is that is not where you want to be is that left side. And Ricky's going to be hard-pressed to not continue on this roller coaster ride going bogey again here. Uh, and, yeah, he's just pitching up. And he's still got 20, 25 feet left. Yep. And Kale getting it down there to uh, within about a foot. Let's see if Chris can capitalize on his birdie here. Make up some strokes on Rick. Yeah, that was a that was a good putt. Ricky, unfortunately, taking a bogey. I'm sure he's not happy about how his round's starting off, so I'm sure we'll start seeing some fireworks soon out of him. Andrew capitalizing on his nice drive. Yeah, that was a good birdie. Uh, 
Kale gonna take a par here. And we are, we're gonna move on to one of the more difficult holes, I think, as far as you have to you have to land your tee shot in a pretty good position. It is a tough par four uh, that's a dog leg left, but this tee shot is crucial. Yeah, you're trying to throw something pretty straight and far for the long lane, or you can throw the shorter lane. Um, I think it's probably almost 50-50 on what people try. There might be a couple more taking the longer lane. Uh, but yeah, your second shot then, if it's not right in the lane, you're navigating trees once again to this basket up on a little bit of a mound. Yeah, I, again, just an elevated putt. Even when you're 15, 20 feet away, you're still putting up at that basket. So it, the putting surface is not the easiest. Really, I think the straight long shot is probably the most high percentage play to get the birdie on this hole. And that inside see. route could be a little bit tougher. Chris went with the inside route there. Um, should have somewhat of a look to get up and down for his birdie. And this is the more common play. Mm -hmm. Trying to go all the way down to the far lane. Yeah, really good shot. He took the outside route, and now he's going to have a pretty much straight shot up the gut to get to the basket location for a second shot. But he's going to have to throw another big shot to get up there. Ricky is not on right now. He just is, you know, he's yeah, slightly I mean, off with what he's doing. We've seen two early releases. I don't know if he's overcompensated and the late release now, but he's struggling to get off the tee pads, which is uh, not uh, good out here at Brewster Ridge. No, and Kale, unfortunate. That looked, that looked good out of his hand if it had just turned a little bit more for him. He's just ripping a hyzer up there. Hopefully, gets a good yeah. skip. Navigating through the tree is really nice, and he gets himself up where he might be able to give it a little bit of a bid, eighty feet or so. You can see Ricky's not in an ideal spot. Uh, he hits early again. He's going to have to settle for trying to yeah, salvage he, par. He's going to be still scrambling just to save par. And here's Chris, who was taking the inside route off his drive and throwing another flick out there. A little bit wide. Long uh, look through those. Yeah. You know, that's not too far away. If he, he could have kept it in a little a... tighter and hit the path and skipped over to the basket, he would have been real happy. But he'll still have his luck. Mm hmm. Andrew playing the hole exactly how you should try to play it. Yeah, he's playing great golf right now. Ricky getting up and out of trouble. Looked like he got up there close. Kale's, Kale's got a realistic look here. Yeah, closer than it originally looked. Uh, just mm. a little low. Elevated basket. Mm. Just hits the tree right in front of the basket there. There are a few locations out here where there are trees or elements close to the basket locations that make it interesting. You know, I mean, it's it makes it tough. You play position golf. You know, you've got to set yourself up on the right side of the green, uh, just like in regular golf. You know, they, they play to certain positions on the golf green uh, to play smart golf. And Andrew, Andrew made great work out of that hole. Pretty much played a textbook. And, yeah, I love what they, they did with this green. The, the little rock structure here is new in the past mm -hmm. uh, two, three years with all the mulch, and it looks really good. I like the little tweaks and, and things they've added to beautify these courses. Sure. Yeah, Jeff has done very well. I know that Steve... Uh, Brinster had a hand in designing some of this, uh, some of the courses as well, uh, and they did. They did a great job. Uh, this this hole is a tough one. A talk about uphill, you've got to blast one off the tee pad and get as far up this hill as you can uh, to have a chance at, at getting your birdie. Uh, but this is a hole that you kind of step up to and go, okay, just let me survive. Yeah, this is one. 
myself, I'm happy with the par on this hole. Uh, it is a huge hole, big mm-hmm. uphill, like you said. Uh, if your drive goes too straight, uh, you end up pinched up on the right side, and it's tough to shape a shot to get far enough on your second one. And if you end up on left side or right side, you're in the trees, and you can't get up there for your birdie, and tough to get in the position just to get your par. Yeah, God forbid you kick into the woods on this one because you, you need to be in the open for every shot that you throw going up this hill. Yeah, you need to get past them first set of trees to to think you have a shot at getting your par on this one. And Ricky with a good-looking shot. Yeah, that's the best one we've seen out of Ricky in a little bit. So hopefully he's starting to gain some control of his drives. That's fighting back for Kale, and that's a oh, bad last little bounce, but that was looking really good. It's a 610-foot hole that plays probably closer to 800 feet. I would agree with that. Maybe, maybe more. I think some people would say more. And yeah, this is an, uh, a new hole for this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just added this one in. So uh, along with its distance and its elevation, uh, it's still fresh. The Off the fairway is rough. It, it's not yeah, I mean, real look, beat in yet. Look, even on the fairway, they have it mulched out pretty good right now. And they gave you a nice playing surface, but everything's pretty soft, you know. So even when you're on the fairway, it makes it a little bit difficult Uh Footing wise, and yeah, I, I would anticipate that you'll see grass growing on this fairway eventually. Um, and boy, won't that look nice! You know, that's I love the trees, I love how they spaced it out. Uh, if you it the fairways are big enough that if you play good shots, you can get up and, and do what you need to on the hole. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be cool in the future for sure as it matures. Yeah, I think this was a great addition to the course. They did a lot of work on the tee boxes on this course as well, and just everything was in everything was in good shape. Chris getting up there, he's just a little bit short, but he should be able to to give that a good go. Yeah, you can see what kind of teeth this thing has when you get off the course. It's hard to even, you know, just pitch back out and get yourself rolling again. Kale's been kind of so, all over the basket. A couple little low. Now that one high. Yeah, these guys are just. I mean, they're they're gonna walk away with pars. Uh, and once again, here we have Andrew who is staring at another birdie. That is impressive. You know, at this yeah. point, Andrew moves to twenty six down. He is. He is far superseding the card, and everyone was pretty close there and tight as we got started. Uh, Wisaki and and Kale are tied at 21 down, and you know Chris is well. Actually, uh, Kale just took a a bogey to go to 20 down, so Wisaki's at 21, Kale's at 20, and uh, and Chris is going to take a double bogey on this hole. So this hole had some teeth. It it beat these guys up. Uh, yeah, Andrew's birdie is huge on that. Um, I'd have to say this is probably playing as one of the hardest holes this year. Andrew has six birdies uh, in the first eight holes, uh, and now we move to hole number nine, uh, which is, uh, again, it's it's no joke. It is a tight – it's a controlled shot. Yeah, you have to throw something very wise. Very straight. Very steep green where you have a big drop-off. You can't get too aggressive. You're going to see most people play a mid-range and or a fairway driver. Uh, and try to get something just to land softly in that green because it, it is steep and you can roll away pretty good. Yeah, he doesn't doesn't like happy. it. A little early release. He's probably going to have to just uh, pitch up for a par. Rick did the same thing. You know, just a little bit early. He's going to kick into the left hand side, which isn't fun. No, it's tough in there. You really got to think on on how you want to get out of there with that with the green sloping like it is. You don't. It's very touchy 
between mm-hmm. the rolls and just sailing it too far off the hill. It's tough to get out of that spot. Kale got a decent one off, but he's still going to be up on that slope, and it's tough to run at this basket from up top. Yeah, cause uh, it's hard to see because that hill's so steep too. Yeah. Let's see if Chris can shape a forehand. Uh, Catching one of the late ones and... You know, that's we'll see gonna be a long look is. and might yeah, we'll have some stuff in his way. You can see Ricky didn't have much there, just trying to hit a little line through some saplings. I still kinda of feel like he yanked that into the trees though, that his he is just not releasing at the points that he that he should be. And they're laying up. I mean they're not they're not trying to run those, you know what yeah. I mean? That slope is Any so bad. Any mess and you're ending up 30 40 feet past and right possibly rolling if you hit the rim or something wrong yeah they're they're playing this whole smart it's it's easy to end up all the way down there and it's and you're all of a sudden you're 40 feet down the hill putting back up at it and trying to salvage a, a bogey instead of a double bogey yeah so. it's not an easy birdie but it's not one you want to be taking a bogey on either yeah so that's that's our front nine of uh, world's coverage uh, out at Brewster Ridge. Um, we will be back with uh, with round two coverage. We want to thank all the guys at Tea Time, Austin and Christian and Lou. Uh, you guys are doing an amazing job. Uh, thanks to Smuggler's Notch and uh, and Jeff Spring uh, and you guys hosting an amazing event. Uh, and we will see you guys for the next round. Yeah, thanks everybody at Tea Time. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe.